Hey everyone, today I'll be doing my parasite assignment which was Intimuba histolytica and Intimuba coli. I will do an introduction, then the parasite uh, physiology and structure, the pathogenesis, epidemiology and clinical appearance, laboratory diagnosis and then a prevention and control. An introduction to the, uh, this uh, parasite is the Intimuba species is a single cell parasite and it's classified as an intestinal protozoa. The Intimuba histolytica causes diseases such as ambiasis and it can be intestinal ambiasis or intraintestinal infections. Intestinal is such as perianal ulcerations and extraintestinal is outside the intestine which is brain abscess. And then the Intimuba coli is a harmless parasite that resides in your large intestines and does not cause any diseases. The parasite structure is put into two structures, it's trophozoids or cysts. The trophozoids of the Intimuba histolytica is 12 to 16 micrometers. It has pseudopodia. The cytoplasm is fine, vacuolated, and looks like fine grounded glass. And then the inclusions, which is diagnostic of it, is the red blood cells. The Intimuba coli trophozoids is 15 to 50 micrometers. It moves very slowly. And then the cytoplasm is granular and vacuolated. And the inclusions are bacteria, yeast, and other artifacts that's not diagnostic of that parasite. The second stage is the cyst. It is 10 to 20 micrometers. It's spherical in shape. It has four nuclei, and then um, the cytoplasm is elongated and has smooth edges. The cyst of the Intimuba coli is 10 to 35 micrometers. It's oval in shape. It has eight nuclei, which is diagnostic of this parasite. And then the cytoplasm may or may not be present. And if it's present, it has a splintered shape. On the left hand side, you can see the trophozoite of the Intimuba histolytica with the ingested red blood cells. And the cyst on the right hand side, which has the four nuclei. On the left is also the trophozoite of Intimuba coli. And on the left, it is the, the cyst, which has the eight nuclei, which is diagnostic how to interpret see it. Pathogenesis, the cyst and the trophozoites are found in feces. It, 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 it is ingested and then it's an, before it's ingested, it's an immature cyst. It moves, through, um, it's contracted and then it moves through your intestines, which is a first a mature cyst. Then it excitates into different small trophozoites and then it becomes infective. And it can live for a, a long time inside your intestines and then it's excreted again in the feces. The epidemiology of the Intimuba histolytica it has a worldwide distribution. It has a prevalence in um, higher in developing countries because the um, health is not so good in those countries. And then the symptoms are lower abdominal ten tenderness, fever is in the minority of patients, weight loss, diarrhea, and bloody stools. And then jaundice can be seen in 10% of individuals. It's transmitted fecal orally and then it can be contracted through food, water and various sexual pr practices. And then vectors which were seen to, to transmit this parasite was flea, um, flies and cockroaches. The Intimuba coli is also found across the world. It has a frequency in higher climate areas and in, in poor hygiene areas. It is ingested exactly the same way as Intimuba histolytica. And then this parasite does not cause any diseases, so it's not a problem in our society. The laboratory diagnosis is you can do stool samples, sigmoidoscopy specimens, biopsies of the lung, liver, brain, and colon, and then liver aspirates. Liver aspirates is not normally used, but if it's used, you use the aspirated material to diagnose it. Then other diagnostic um, laboratory diagnosis which you can use is antigen detection, histology, PCR and then antibody detection. Antibody detection is to detect the antibodies against the parasite when you contracted it. Prevention and control is you can drink purified water. In your area, if you don't have purified water, then usually what they did is they put the water into a kettle and then they boiled the water to kill off the parasite. Do not eat any raw fruits and wash your fruit before you eat it. And then carbazone kills uh, the trophozoite of the Intimuba histolytica. You can do fluid replacement if you had diarrhea. And then Intimuba coli does not need any antimicrobial drugs because it doesn't cause any diseases, so there's no need to kill it. And then two drugs that are normally used are luminal ambicides such as idoquinol and tissue ambicides such as, such as metronidazole. And then my references which I used is the CDC, the WHO and our, our book. You guys can look up on um, 
what, uh, how to do the laboratory diagnosis. Thank you guys for watching.